All right, praise the Lord. My name is Maurice. Uh, I'm a senior at OSU. I'll be finishing up this semester with a degree in psychology, and I'm very excited to be sharing with you in our second to last Bible study. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen. You probably won't be able to see my face um, the whole time because I have a presentation. So take a good look now. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna share the screen and we can get started. All right. Hey. All right. So tonight we're talking about the way of salvation or God's way of salvation. And as Hannah said, um, this is our sixth item of the faith. And these items mean a lot to God, right? So much so that um, God personally saves us. So this is his way of salvation. Um, we're just reaping the benefits of it. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at uh, is a few common concepts um, concerning uh, how we are saved. Now, these, uh, this is not an, an exhausted list here. I'm just going to show three points or look, look at three points. And these are three um, ideas that you may have or have had in the past um, that really um, keep us from realizing the scope of our salvation um, and, the, and the meaning of, of our salvation. So the first one is, I have been going to church my entire life, so I should be saved. Second, I have been good and have not committed any major sin, so I should be okay. And lastly, I know about Jesus and I try to think about what would Jesus do, and I live according to that. So these are things, remember, that you may think now or have thought in the past, or you may know people that think this way, but it's important that we talk about these things and we bring them to light um, so we can understand our salvation and stand firmly in our salvation. So this is a few common concepts concerning how we are saved. But on the flip side, there are common concepts concerning our life after we receive the Lord or after we are saved. The first one is, so I received Jesus, so I'm not going to hell. Now I can live any way that I want to. The second, I received Jesus, but it seems like I still sin like the way I did before I prayed to receive him. Last one, I have accepted Jesus into my life. So what should I be doing with the rest of my life as a Christian? Okay, so just to reiterate, these are all th so six common concepts that are wrong or are not completely uh, scripturally sound, right? They're not um, biblically sound uh, concerning our salvation. So we need to expose these things and understand them and see exactly um, why they're wrong and how they're hindering us uh, from going on in our walk with the Lord. Because if we don't expose these concepts, but hold on to them rather, um, our Christian life, which is meant for God's purpose, Right? Our Christian life is meant for God's purpose. It will feel meaningless and will be directionless and goalless. Right? So we have, we would have received the Lord for no reason, basically. Um, basically living a meaningless and, and, and directionless life. So the rest of this presentation will touch on these six concepts and uh, we'll see uh, the way uh, in which we have been saved or the way in which we can be saved even. All right, the first thing we need to discuss is why we need to be saved to begin with. Okay, so the question is why? Well, every human is fallen, all right? So every fallen human being has a two-fold problem. And we have two issues. The first one is sin. The second one is death, all right? So we have a problem with sin. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Okay, so what does sin mean? Well, sin is um, when we go against God, right? Sin is the very thing uh, that separates us from God. And it's very experiential. So when you're uh, living with your parents and your parents tell you to do something and you don't do it, well, your parent, your, well, God put your parents in, in place. He put, he put them in authority. So 
So when you go against them, you sin. You sin against them, and you sin against God. When you break the law, right, God put uh, the government in place, right? He, gave, he put us under authority. And when we go against the law, we, we sin against um, the law, and we sin against God. And when we go against God directly, we know we have sinned because our conscience tells us so. We feel guilt, and we sin directly against God. So we can sin against man, and we can sin against God. And when we sin, we fall. We fall short of the glory of God. We are actually separated and taken out of his glory, right? out of his presence. Then our second problem is death. Now, death uh, means a lot in the Bible. There's a lot to talk about with death. But this doesn't necessarily refer to our physical death, our physical dying. But it refers to our spiritual um, death. All right, so um, this is also very experiential. Inside, you may feel very empty, um, very lonely, very depressed. Um, all these are signs of, of death, right? There's a hole in you. Um, there's this a, a, a void of life, right? There's nothing living inside of you. Um, and you. And you feel this way, and no matter what you do, right, you try to fill it, but you just can't seem um, to fill this gap or this hole within you. This is because inside you're dying, right? You may see someone, you may say, oh, you look like a zombie today, <laughs> right? But even more so spiritually, when we're dead, um, we, like, we can't even speak. We can't, we can't enjoy God. We can't enjoy anything really because we're dead inside. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, and you, though dead in your offenses and sins, right? So because we are dead, um, we are lying uh, in our offenses and sins. And we're, we're dead because we have offenses and sins. So our sins lead us to death. Um, and we'll dive into this uh, much more as we go on. So because of sin and death, there's a trickle effect, right? There's, there are other issues that, that, that arise because we, because we sin and we experience death. The first is, we have offended God's righteousness and are not one with, and are not right with him. Right? God is right and he's the he's the almighty, but because of our sin, we're not right with him. Right? There's no peace. There's something separating us that's blocking us from him. And secondly, because we are not right with him because of our sin and death, we are actually one with Satan and have become God's enemy. Have you ever realized that you are one with Satan when you sin? and you become God's enemy, this is a very pitiful place uh, to find ourselves. Because we're God's enemy, we must suffer the wrath of God's righteous judgment, right? So um, God, does, God has to judge us because of our sin and death. He's righteous. He cannot go against um, his, his righteousness. Now, Revelation 20, 15, this is a very sobering verse. It says, and if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Right? If anyone, this is very serious. If we do not deal with sin and death, we will end up in hell. Now, this place was not meant for man. This was meant for Satan. But, we are, but because of our sin and death, we are one with Satan. But praise the Lord, God has provided something for us. And we know that this is not God's heart's desire for us because of this particular provision. This provision is that God has dealt with our sin. He saves us from sin. But how does he do it? Well, he justifies us. To be justified means to be right. And we are made right with God according to his standard, his standard of righteousness. It's very important that we're we're made right according to God's standard and not man's or, or, or any uh, man-made standard. Why? Because this standard of righteousness is impossibly high, right? We're like this red panda you see here trying to reach this door handle. We could never, never, ever reach God's standard of righteousness, right? That's like this panda cannot reach the door handle. Now, I had a friend who said, well, I don't know. I think I'll try God. Um, I had a friend actually tell me, I'll go 100 days and do 100 good deeds, and 
God will have to justify me. Right? He'll have to he have to take that. I don't need his justification. I can do it on my own. So his idea was to do a hundred good things for a hundred days to prove that there's nothing wrong with him and that he's righteous himself. Well, Jesus would have something to say about that. In Matthew 5, 21, the Lord says, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to the judgment, right? So the law was do not murder. If you murder, you will be judged. But Matthew 5, 22 says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to the judgment. So Jesus took the standards so, so much higher. It's not just um, killing someone, but even if you're angry in your heart, you have committed a sin, you are wrong. You are not right with God, it's even in your heart. So no matter if you do a hundred good things, we could never change what's in our heart. We can't not be angry with someone, it just happens. And even this, it's liable for us to, um, to be judged. So this is very serious. But then again, God provided something for us. We are not justified, or we are justified not uh, by any of our own effort. Now, this is not by anything that we can do. Nothing, no, nothing we can do can please God or make us right with God. All right, nothing. Get this in your head. Nothing that you can do can make you right with God. This is completely... Uh, dependent upon God and what he did for us. So what did God do? How can we be justified by God according to the Bible? Well, Romans 3.21 says, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested. So this is apart from the law. So the law is all the things that we must um, abide by or, or hereby, all the things that we can't do and things that we can do. But the Bible says, it's apart from this. God showed his righteousness to us apart from the law. It has nothing to do with that. So it completely eliminates man. Romans 3.22 says, even the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ to all those who believe. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. So God showed his righteousness to us, even gave us righteousness, even made us righteous in himself, simply through our faith in Jesus Christ, right? To all those who believe, right? So simply believing, God justified us freely. This was free through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. So God became a man. We talked about this um, in our previous Bible studies. God became a man and he lived a perfect, sinless life. And he went to the cross and he bore our sin and he bore our death right on that cross and when we believe in him we receive justification freely and righteousness freely what is the result of our being of our being made right with god well romans 5 1 says therefore having been just justified out of faith right there it is we're justified out of faith we have peace toward God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace toward God. There is now nothing standing between us and God. We are no longer enemies, right? And we even have peace with each other because we have peace toward God. But how do we receive this? So God has made this provision for us. How exactly do we receive it? Now we said something about believing. Well, how do we believe? Romans 10, 13 says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible actually says to call upon the name of the Lord. You have to say, oh, Lord Jesus, save me. And Acts 4, 12 just backs this up. It says, and there's no salvation, there's salvation in no other. Salvation in no other. For neither is there any other name under heaven given among men in which we must be saved. So we can only be saved in a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. When we say, oh, Lord Jesus, save us, we're saved. That's it. Praise the Lord for this. This is amazing. All right. Now, being saved from sin is wonderful. 
That's the first thing that God did. He saved us from sin. We still have that death problem, right? That's our second issue. So did you know that there is much more? <laughs> there is so much more to what God did for us. And this is actually the most important aspect. And this will touch um, the concepts that we have about what we should do with our Christian life um, or, or why we're saved or what are we saved for. And it'll even touch the issue of us feeling like we haven't been changed. So Romans 5.10 says, For if we, being enemies, were reconciled to God through the death of his son. So we were enemies, but we've, we've been reconciled, right? We're no longer one with Satan. Much more, we will be saved in his life, having been reconciled. Much more will we be saved in his life. So what does this mean in his life? Okay, so after believing into Jesus, we are also born of God to receive his life and nature to become God's sons. Yes, I said it. You are a son of God. It's true. You can declare it. You can proclaim it. You are a son. When you believe, when you call upon his name, he came into you as life. You received his life in nature. You were born again. Hallelujah. John 1.11 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of God. You have the authority and no one can take this from you. John 1.12, who were begotten not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. All right, so the word begotten, that just simply means offspring, right? We're God's offspring. God uh, birthed us spiritually. And this was not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. This was not something in yourself, not something in your parents or um, uh, just, just by going to church and, and hearing, but, but of God. When you believe, when you call upon his name, God came into you. God worked out this salvation and gave you his life and nature. So as children of God, what do we do? Well, we need to spend the rest of our lives as Christians to allow his wonderful life in us to grow. Okay, so you're wondering why, why I haven't changed. Why do I feel still so low in my Christian life? Why, do, why does it still look like I have, I'm not any different than before? Well, don't worry. You just have to grow, right? Just like this little baby. Right? We have to grow in this life. We weren't born full adults, right? We were born babies. The same way spiritually, we were born as babes. And 1 Peter 2.2 2 says this, as newborn babes long for the godless milk of the word in order that by it you may grow unto salvation, right? This is the part where we're saved much more in his life. When we enjoy this life, when we're reading the word, when we're reading the word with our other friends who are Christians and uh, when we're meeting together as Christians, we are growing unto salvation. This is dealing with our death. This is dealing with the emptiness we, we experience within. God is filling that, that, that hole in us with his life, right? He is spreading in us as life and we are growing unto salvation each day, day by day, bit by bit. Okay, so the Christian life, once again, is not a life of trying to be good and waiting to go to heaven. This is very important, we need to realize this. Your Christian life is not a life of you trying to do many good things. It is good to do good, but it doesn't save you, right? And just waiting to go to heaven is so much more, right? This is the much more. God gave you his life to experience now. You don't have to wait to go to heaven to experience God's life, all right? Our Christian life is a life of allowing God's life to grow within us unto maturity. I have such a problem with this. I always feel like um, I just need to be grown up already, right? I try to rush the process, but this is so slow. This process is day by day and bit by di bit, by bit until maturity. Now, if you look down, down at the right, um, there's a little diagram. So this is you here, right? You're a body, you're a soul and a spirit. Now, this is, this is what happened when you believed into Jesus. All right, God came into your spirit. He came into your spirit. This is where he is right now. 
in your spirit. I'm over time. I want to finish up very quickly. Uh, God came into your spirit. And as you enjoy him, as you enjoy this life, what is he doing? He is spreading from your spirit to your soul and your body. So you will eventually, you will eventually express him. You will grow into maturity if you let this life spread in your being. All right, we will grow into maturity until we become the same as he is. Praise the Lord. First John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been manifested what we will be. But we know that if he is manifested, we will be like him. Because we will see him even as he is. Hallelujah. We will be like him. You don't have to worry. You will be like him if you let this life spread in you. Okay. Now, day by day. By day we're still human, we're st we still mess up, we still make mistakes, but it's okay. God has made a way once again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is so important. This is actually probably one of the biggest things, right? He is faithful and righteous. Remember, God cannot go against his own righteousness. If you confess, he has to forgive you. He has to cleanse, he has, he has to cleanse you. You can go on growing and enjoying this life if only you confess your sins. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. This is the very last slide. This is the very last bit. Um, we're just going to sum up what God has done. All right. So this is God's complete salvation. Salvation is a long bridge. All right. Initially, when you, when you were saved, when you believed into the Lord, he cleansed your sin. He forgave you. This is you getting on the bridge, right? Your initial salvation. So you're all the way over here. You still have your whole life to live. Well, our life's journey is being saved much more in the life of God, right? Each day, we're growing and becoming more like him. We're walking this bridge, right? Saved in his life. Amen. And then lastly, in the end, we will fully express God and be like him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So. That is the presentation. I hope uh, that you gained a very deep appreciation uh, for your salvation. Amen.